Howdy SEO Mouse fans, welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Friday. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about Follower Wonk. Now, for those of you who don't know, SEO Mouse recently acquired Follower Wonk. It's now a completely free product for pro users. So if you're an SEO Mouse pro customer, you literally just go over to Follower Wonk, connect your SEO Mouse account, log in with Twitter if you haven't already connected a Twitter account, and boom, you're, you're good to go. Like you, you get Follower Wonk free. We, we're very excited about this. And I've loved Follower Wonk for a long time. Kind of wanted to do a Whiteboard Friday about all the cool ways that I use it and all the cool ways that SEOs can use it to do magical stuff with their social accounts and link building and outreach and all that kind of stuff. But I figured, hey, let's wait until it's free for you. So here you go. Now Follower Wonk, totally free. You can use it anytime you want. And so I've got four tips. Uh, and this is based on four different sections of Wonk. So if you go to the Follower Wonk product, you'll see four tabs that look like this, you know, search, compare, analyze, and track. And those four tabs, there's actually a fifth tab that I'm not going to mention today, but you, you can go check it out too. But number one, the first one is the bio search feature. Now, this is very cool for sort of outreach and discovery. If you think of Open Site Explorer as a look into the link graph of the web, the bio search inside Follower Wonk is really a look into the tweet graph or the Twitter user graph of Twitter. So I can go and I can do things like uh, outreach, look for journalists or bloggers, influencers in a specific niche, etc. just by searching the words in here. A warning though, you've got to be pretty literal. So I would do a couple of things. I would first click on the more options. There's a more options link right below the search box. If you, if you click that link, it'll drop down another box that shows you a bunch of other options. Get creative in there. Start searching for um, synonyms, right? So it might be, someone might call themselves a journalist, a reporter, a writer, uh, an investigator, whatever it is. And you want to be making sure that you're using all those different combinations. Same is true for location stuff. So some people, you know, they'll say they're in Dublin. They'll say they're in Ireland. They'll say they're in Southern Ireland. They'll say they're in, uh, you know, some weird combination of phrases. Sometimes people will use SEA to describe Seattle. Fine, great. So you just need to be creative when you're plugging those terms in here. You can also use it for geotargeting, so find folks to connect with. If you're going to a city, you're going to an event somewhere, you're visiting somewhere and you know, hey, let me just see if there's influential people in my sphere, right? So if you're in the uh, paper goods industry and you want to see if there's you know, a big letterpress person, a big engraver person, a big craft artist who happens to be in Philadelphia or Pittsburgh or Austin, Texas, wherever you're going, you can use that bio search, find those people, start tweeting back and forth, hey, at so-and-so, I'm visiting next week, any recommendations? You often get great replies and can build great connections out of that. Events and interests. So this is another way to use this. If you're going to be at a specific event, even an online event, a webinar, or you're going to participate in a Twitter chat or something like that, you can look for the people who have those hashtags and who are in a location or in a specific field, right? So if I'm going, I'm going to Dublin, for example, later this month, I might search for SEOs who happen to be in Dublin, and I can see if I can uh, connect with those folks, get them to come to an event that I'm going to be speaking at while I'm there, those kinds of things. And you can really use this to figure out who are the influencers in a specific industry or at a conference or meetup. Number two, compare users. This, this has got to be one of my favorite features, right? And the reason is really simple. When you think about doing link outreach, one of the most powerful ways and, and things that people do is use the SEO Moz Link Intersect tool. And they use it to go, who is linking to two or more of my competitors, but not to me? Magical. You can do that with Follower Wonk on Twitter. If you go to the Compare Users tab, you can only do it for two at a time, but it still works really well and it's very fast. So I can go, oh, hey, I want to see who's following Joel and who's following Karen, who is not following me. And that's exactly what this point of intersect in the little follower Wong Venn diagram does. And if I look at those, there's a list on the side. I can actually click and see the list of users. Sort them by influence, sort them by follower count, sort them by a ratio, whatever I want to sort them by. I can even download and excel that group if I want and, and then you know, import and play around with it and do my pivot tables, whatever you want to do. This is an awesome way for discovering those likely influential followers of uh, your topic area who are interested in the things you're interested in and follow multiple competitors. If they follow one of your competitors, they might just be a fan of them. If they follow two or more, chances are they're a subject matter expert or a subject matter interested person, and that means they're a great potential target for, for outreach, for influence. You know that you want to probably reach that group, particularly the ones who have lots of followers, right? Number three, the analyze followers. Ooh, I don't know, tough, tough call as to whether this is my favorite feature or this one. So uh, 
for, for you, for your own account, what I recommend is plugging it into the Analyze Followers. So, you know, I plug in at Randfish, you plug in your account name, and then it'll show you all sorts of things. If you scroll to the bottom of that list, there's tons of stuff. So, there's like geo data, and there's tweet and retweet data, and there's uh, the distribution of the influence of the influencers of your followers, and all sorts of other cool stuff. But one of my favorite ones is this little graph right here. It basically shows times a day. So, you know, this will be like, you know, 12 a.m. or whatever. And this will be 12, you know, 12 p.m. in here, and that's like 11 p.m. down here. And it'll show me what time my followers are online and what percentage of them are online. The coolest part about this is if you look at the top, the highest bar on there, what you'll most likely see is something under 10%. What this means is that people who are on Twitter, of your followers who are on Twitter, less than 10%, for me, it's 6.5% of my followers maximum are on Twitter, using Twitter at any given time. So if I tweet a link, unless someone's going back through and looking at all their tweets and my account specifically, the maximum number of people that I'm gonna reach is uh, less than 3,000, right? Because I have 60,000-ish followers, so 5% of that would be around 3,000. Crap, you know what this tells me? This tells me I really, really, really should be sharing not just at this time of day, but probably at least once or twice more if I have an important link to share. So I put up a new blog post pretty much every night on moz.com slash ran, my new blog, and I share late, late at night. In fact, I share right there at probably the worst possible time I could share because I'm, that's when I'm up and I go to sleep around 1 or 2 a.m. and I don't get enough sleep and I should probably change that. But, but. <laughs> I share here, I need to share again in the morning Pacific time because that's when the most, uh, n the highest number of my followers. And I could probably do with sharing again the next afternoon without much overlap. There are very few people who are going to be online all three of those times. Sharing twice or three times saying, hey, here's my post from last night in case you missed it, that kind of a thing, which I do almost every morning. This is a very, very excellent idea. And this graph will show you exactly when to do that. Super smart, really, really cool. For others' accounts, I would also recommend that you plug in you know, some other folks and analyze, particularly folks in your industry or folks who are influencers or journalists or whoever it is that you think you want to have some overlap with, find who their most influential followers are. So this could be a competitor, it could be a reporter in your space, could be someone who's just a very powerful blogger, right? And whether they're a right target, because this, the, the list of data that you'll see will show you a lot of information about like who's following them, from a demographic and psychographic perspective and a tweet likelihood perspective and an influencer perspective. Sometimes clicking on that list of high influencers, uh, of followers of them that have you know, a lot of inf influential uh, uh, followers and seeing who those people are, th those can also turn into great targets to connect with. Last thing, the track followers uh, account. Now my, my favorite part of this particular feature is that it shows me a timeline of new followers and lost followers, right? So basically what I'm seeing up here is, you know, I gained like, you know, plus 100 new followers on this day. Well, well, what did I do that day? And I can click and actually see who are those followers. I can click over to my Twitter account and see, you know, what did I, what was I tweeting that day? This is a great, great way to see, did I, am I doing a good job of engaging? Is it when I tweet a lot or when I tweet a little or when I get a lot of retweets or when I share a particular link or what am I doing that's getting me there? And in fact, I had a fascinating example recently. So this past week, this, actually when you're watching this, this will be two weeks ago, uh, I was in Boston for the inbound conference from, from HubSpot, and I spoke to a big audience there. There's almost 2,000 people in the audience, I think like 2,800 attendees, so big audience, right? And I do a keynote session on some SEO stuff, and this is what happened. I get, basically had my highest growth day that I've had in almost three months. Um, well, I had, I had a big day when we got some funding too. So. But this was like plus 390 some odd followers that, that joined that day and started following me. And I had a bunch of followers the next day. And that same time, I got verified by Twitter. Twitter sent an email saying, oh, hey, we'd like to verify your account. So kind of a fascinating thing. And this actually keeps track of who those people are and what happened. So I can see and I can try and track down, was it really me doing the HubSpot conference? Was it something else? It probably was the, the inbound conference. But this is a fascinating thing. I can do the same thing on the other side and look at, how, why did I lose so many followers here? What did I tweet? By the way, almost every time I lose a bunch of followers, it's one of two things. I tweeted something uh, relatively political, you know, or, or um, and I mean political, not just in the sense of like, 
you know, sort of American politics and, and national politics, but also political in terms of black hat, white hat, you know, and uh, an SEO spammers versus, you know, the good guys in SEO, that kind of stuff. That can lose me quite a few followers. Uh, and then the other reason that I lose a lot of followers that I've seen is when Twitter does a big spam clear out. So it'll clear out a ton of spam accounts and that'll drop my follower account. So it's fascinating to watch this stuff. All four of these are just great reasons to be using FollowerWonk. If, if you've got an SEO Must Pro account, you should go check this out. Even if you don't, a lot of these features are, are free. You can use them the first time for free. So I would encourage you to do it. You'll get a ton of value out of Wonk. Uh, in terms of Twitter and adding value to your SEO campaigns and growing your social media presence and the reach of your links, there's just there's nothing like this. And so that's, that's why I was so excited to, to acquire them. And if you have great suggestions for Follower Wonk, things that you want to see, please leave them down in the comments. We would love that. Thanks very much, everyone. We'll see you again next time for another edition of White Park Friday. Take care.